Okay. Hi, everybody. Lex Gray here. Welcome back to a new video. In this one, I'm going to be trying out a local game I found uh, quite some time ago. It's been on my shelf, and I've uh, played it on and off with a friend of mine for a while. But I figured I want to do a, uh, a one on camera. So this is Cthulhu Age of Madness. It's a card game. It's a versus card game. You can do up to four players with different go Cthulhu gods from HP uh, Lovecraft lore. Uh, here I have two mats. We're playing solo as usual. I have Cthulhu near me, and then I have Azathoth right over here. So essentially, you're basically playing the gods themselves, and you have to overcome each other by opening these four seals. The first player to open the four seals wins. Each god has a slight cork uh, and an advantage. For Azeroth, uh, I'm sorry, for Cthulhu, when he opens a seal, he can convert a cultist in the pool here. These are specials in overflow. For Azathoth, uh, right over here, you can take an extra action, basically, if you unlock a seal. So I'm sorry, that's not the right card. I have the right one here. I have not the right card, but basically Azeroth has where you can... There it is. Your hand increases, your hand size increases by one card on every seal you unlock. So that's definitely a great advantage to have. But as you can see, I typically play as Cthulhu, personal favorite of mine. And uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm not really here to teach you guys how to play the game. I'm just I will explain. I'm not perfect at it, but it's uh, it's quite straightforward. You can probably play it, uh, you can probably set it up in a few minutes, play it for about 10 to 12, and you will learn it. Uh, I have spoken to the creators of the game at a convention about a year and a half ago, I want to say, about a year ago, roughly. And uh, they we did a playthrough at the convention. It was quite fun. I had beginner's luck, of course. And so the creators are... Um, friends with uh, a tabletop store owner and he has this uh, the, the owners have this game on the shelf that you can play at the store at the tabletop store so it definitely ha had a kickstarter and it's definitely a local um it's available in, like a local retailers i think it, it has like it had like a really good kickstart 100 percent uh, success rate so uh, but enough about that basically this pile of cards here is it's all the uh, all the cards you draw, and then you draw into your hands. Uh, the dealer draws uh, five cards. So I'm going to uh, pause the recording and shuffle these from before. Okay, so like I said, you guys can see both, most of both player mats. I don't have that overhead camera anymore. I have this uh, table stand. And uh, each player gets five cards, up to five cards. So we will draw uh, each card hand for each player. So I'll do five. Cthulhu will go first. So he gets the first card. And then that's five. So when you draw the five cards, we'll look at Cthulhu's hand first. He has uh, a few typical ones, which are convert cultists. Then you have a couple of loyal Cthulhu followers. And that's definitely a good card right there. So you have your cultist cards. Uh, you have your convert cultists. If you don't have a cultist loyal to your god, you can pl still place them in the pool, these right here. But you have to use this card, or you have to sacrifice a cultist to convert one. So... Uh, then this card right here, I'm not going to show you every card throughout the entire game. I just want to show you what some of these cards look like. This one, you basically draw two cards and place them into your hand. And then there was, uh, let's see, this one, which basically you can choose an opponent's cultist and send it to the graveyard. The graveyard is going to be typically right next door to the stack of cards. So Cthulhu will basically place a loyal cultist down here right off camera. And I will play the Grim Bearer banner, which will allow me to draw two cards. So I'm going to draw, uh, this one is actually a pretty good card. You can place a card from opponent's hand and disregard it 
uh, into the graveyard. So you can pick a card, not at random, and I drew another um, different cultist. That's all I can do because that counted as an action. You have two actions per turn, uh, standard action. Some cards do allow you to, to play a free action. Typically, I think your perk is a free action normally when you open a seal. And that's all I'm going to do for Cthulhu. So I'll put his cards down right here. Next is going to be Azathoth. He will do the following. His cards are... He has no... He has one non-loyal cultist. So I'll put him... I usually put non-cultists or non-loyal cultists to the far right. These cards right here is are used if you convert to cultists. It's just a reminder... But for me, I typically keep my converted cultists to the far left. And so we have a couple of really interesting, unique cards here. And I notice I only have... Uh, oh, that's right. I, I put a card down right here off camera. So I have a... I'll try to put them on camera for you guys, if, just so you can see it. Same with, uh, with Cthulhu. So these these cards to the, to the right are non-followers. Once to you to the bottom on your screen are followers, which you don't have to convert, obviously. And to un you can, there's a couple ways to unlock the seal. You can stack four loyal converted, loyal or slash converted cultists. That opens a seal. Remember, you have to open four to win the game. Or you can uh, use an elder sign, which is a card that opens a seal. Speaking of elder sign, Mr. Uh, Azathoth here has a steel elder sign. There are counters. To, there are a lot of cards in this game where you can counter against the opponent. There's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of stealing. There's a lot of aggressive use of cards, which is great. It's not it's not very um, one-sided in, in activity. So I have that pretty good card there. I have the similar Grim Banner from before. I have one I can, I can choose two cards. And there's Barrier Spell, which allows you not to be interacted with uh, for, the under, for the next opponent's turn. So I'll place that for um, Azmathoth. That's my first action. And then uh, I will use draw two cards, the, ban the, the Grim Banner, to draw two cards for Azathoth's hand. And he has uh, drawn actually a really good card here in a fellow loyalist, fellow uh, cultist. So those hands will go here. We're back to Cthulhu. Uh, Cthulhu has a total of five cards based on that last card we drew that allowed him to draw two. We're going to place another Cthulhu card down here that puts us at two for that stack. You need four to unlock a seal. We have, uh, I have two, uh, convert, I have one convert cultist card. Now, uh, we're going to place this guy who is not a follower, but we will keep him here for now. And that's all I can do. And at the end of the turn, you draw two cards. Now, some this this deck here has some Kickstarter cards that were so, uh, that were given at the convention I went to, so they are one of a kind apparently. So that's all I can do for Cthulhu. Now we'll go back to Azathoth, and Azathoth forgot to draw a card, so I need to uh, to replenish my card deck. I forgot to do that. So it's just a Cthulhu follower. Now I have Whispers of the Void, which is a, you can take an opponent's finish ritual so circle and put it on your own. That's a very powerful card, especially for the conventional way of opening a seal. But obviously I'm going to place a Azathoth follower just on the camera there. And I'm going to use Kembalistic Endeavor, which is a card where, like I said... You can pick a card from the opponent's deck and disregard it. So that is that is an action. So I'm going to steal this card right here, which is the Curious Curator. Discard up the three cards from your hands and take equal amount disregarded from opponents randomly. That's definitely a powerful card. So I'm going to take that away from Cthulhu. Cthulhu's down to four, not on their turn. And... Uh, my barrier is still in play, which I almost forgot about. Uh, so, actually, the barrier is inactive now, so I have to uh, put that away. Any any uh, 
cards that are special overflow or specials you have to disregard after your turn return after you return back to your turn so i think that's all i can do yep i replenished my deck to two cards to equal five there's another steel elder sign wow but no elder signs in sight okay so cthulhu only has four i cannot replenish the hand until the end of my turn but i do have a cthulhu follower that puts me up three and then we're gonna have a little fun here i'm gonna pick a card from the opponent's hand and disregard it so same thing that happened from before definitely one of the elder oh you know definitely one of the elder signs or the steel elder signs we'll put that away back to cthulhu and that's all Cthulhu can do. So he's going to draw two more cards here. Okay. Now we're back to Azathoth. Azathoth has uh, a Cthulhu cultist. Not a lot. But we can put down a Cthulhu cultist for now. In a different pile. And then we can convert a cultist to an Azathoth cultist. So I'm going to take this guy here. Actually, I'm going to do Cthulhu to piss off Cthulhu. And now Cthulhu is in my loyal pile. And I draw three cards to replenish my deck. And that's all I can do for Azathoth. Back to Cthulhu. Uh, we have something I wanted to do here now, which is going to be convert cultists. For this one, we're going to convert the... Uh, Nerithotep Coltis, I believe I cannot pronounce that, and put him in the Cthulhu pile, which opens a seal. And that's the first move. It doesn't, we don't have any active Coltis to convert yet, which I should have done first, but that's okay. Now I'm going to choose an opponent's Coltis that's in the graveyard, and I'm going to choose an opponent's Coltis that's one Coltis. I'm going to, I'm going to extinguish one of the converted Cthulhu cultists here, and that's all I can do. Draw my cards. Oops. There we go. Okay, and then we have replenished our deck. That's what we have now. Next is Azathoth. Azathoth has that very intriguing card, which lets us take an opponent's completed seal, circle, ritual circle, and put it in our own. So now Azathoth is in the lead. That card has been disregarded. That's one action. Now we have, uh, we're going to place another non-follower. Then we're going to pick our replenishment, which is, oh, there's a good card right there. Back to Cthulhu, who just lost a ritual. So, We'll put down a non-cultist. Then we will use a card, pick a coder from a card's hand, which was Cannibalistic Endeavor. We're familiar with that. We've done that multiple times. I'm going to pick another Elder Sign, or a Steel Elder Sign, from that, that hand. And that's all I can do for Cthulhu. Draw back the two cards. Okay. Back to Azathoth. So as a top is down to one card or four cards, uh, the rogue Inqu inquisitor draw five cards into your hand and then disregard five cards in the graveyard player play played as a reaction. If I'm not happy with my deck, which it's a mixed bag, I have one non follower and I have two very good cards and I, I have this perk. This is, this is a free action. So we can, let's do that. I disregard this. I disregard up to pretty much my whole hand and draw five new cards. There's a good card. Two, three, four, five. So uh, we have an Elder Sign. So we have our first Elder Sign drawn for today. That will unlock us. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Draw the cards per the unlock seal. So I can actually draw two cards here based on those seals we unlocked from earlier. One was a correction. And then I'm going to do one more action this card right here the Rimor, embodies one of our cultists empowers them to count as two so now we have two cultists in our pile 
of our singular. And that's all I can do because I have uh, five cards and I'm going to draw it back up to the seven I can have. That's the perk of Azathoth because, again, every seal gives you an extra card for play. Back to Cthulhu, which is not looking good. Uh, we're going to basically use pick a card from, once again, the Endeavor one and disregard it into the, uh, the Shadow Realm. I'm going to pick uh, this card right here. And then I have one more, t one more action. I'm going to do a cultist, like so, a non-loyal cultist. If I cannot pronounce the other god's name, I'm going to say just non-loyal, non-follower, non-loyal cultist. That's all I can do. I'm going to draw two cards, another Rim War, and another custom card. Back to Azathoth. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So Azathoth definitely has a big collection of cards here. We have... Mysterious mystery. Player takes everyone's hand, shuffle all the cards, and reveals everyone in your hand. I don't want to do that just yet. I have uh, Grim Banner. Draw two cards from... I definitely use that card. That will count as an action, though. Look at all these Azathoths I have drawn now. So, just organizing my deck here. I have a couple of Azathoths in my hand. I'm going to place one down here. Like so. This basically counts as uh, three because of the booster that I have below. And that's all I can do. So I have, I can have seven cards. I have six. So I'm going to draw back one, another Azathoth. Okay, back to Cthulhu. Um, we're going to use another non-loyalist, but the same god, to do three. And then we will do draw five cards into your hand and then disregard five cards into the graveyard. So I'll draw five cards. This is going to be uh, the Rogue Inquisitor. I'll draw five. And then I can choose five others to disregard. So I'm going to do the uh, these two here and keep that one, this other third one there. As a thought is also my hand. I'm going to disregard these two as a thos. There you go. And it looks like I'm down some cards, which is fine. So I'm going to disregard these cards here. And then that was a free action, so I can have one more turn. I'm going to do four cards stacked of the Yaxathoth cultus pile. And that's all I can do. I draw three cards to replenish my deck. That's four, and that's five. Next is Azathoth. He is going to now play uh, two cultists to unlock us, or I'm sorry, one cultist because of the Grim Bear, which gives us uh, Grim War, which gives us a, a one of them equals to two, so that, that unlocks a seal. So that will go the sealed, the cultists you. Compile it into the four for a ritual. Goes on the seal. This card gets disregarded. That now draws us a card. Okay. I have one more action. Looking at my cards here. There's a couple of ones I haven't shown you guys yet. Master's Call. Take cultists from the other player matching your Elder God. I don't have any. Cthulhu doesn't have any as a thought cultist. But that's still a pretty good card. And I have Mystery Mystery, which is the one I'm iffy about using. I'm going to place down another Azathoth Cultist here. So that's six, seven, eight. So I can draw. Okay, so Azathoth has six cards. We can draw two more to equal eight based on the rituals he has unlocked. Well, one of them is unlocked by Elder Sign. So that's his deck. That's all he can do, or it can do. Uh, Cthulhu. We have five cards here. Don't exactly have any current, but we have these four. So with any cultist card that's not a follower of your god, you can convert one of your active cultists to your elk god by sacrificing another. So 
I can place one of these cards in the, in the graveyard and carry over a Cthulhu, a now Cthulhu follower. Or I can use Master Skull, but I don't have any Cthulhus over here. So there is a rule in the game. You can disregard your whole hands or a number of cards and redraw that, but that counts as your entire turn. You can only do that at the, at the, the as your first action. So um, what I'll do is I will sacrifice a Yogg-Soth uh, card here and carry over one of them to the Cthulhu side. And I'm going to put a, uh, a Grimoire, which multiplies him to technically two. And then I'm going to draw my cards replenish. Ooh, there's a custom card I made myself. So these games when I bought when I bought it, or the card when I got this game, there were a couple of blanks, which I think was intentional. So I, I made my own card, which was sacrifice your next turn to unlock one seal. So that was a, a it's a good one, but you lose a turn. But you do unlock a seal. Okay, so it's now back to Azathoth. So I can send, let's send one of Azathoth's, one of Cthulhu's to a uh, cultist to a graveyard. I will send uh, the recently converted Cthulhu. And then I'm going to play, let's put down a third Narathal uh, god right there. And that's all I can do. We're down back to uh, drawing the eight cards here. Total. Okay. Back back to uh, uh, there's that custom card. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sacrifice my next turn to unlock a seal. So I'm gonna use one of my markers to unlock a seal, which converts these three here to Cthulhu Cultus. And now I'm gonna replenish my deck with one card. So that was, uh, I'm sorry, that was my one action. The conversion is a free action. I don't have any cultists to convert from the other side. I'm gonna place a Yaksathith one right here. And that ends my turn. I'm gonna do two cards. That ends, uh, that's the two moves. And now basically, yeah, uh, Azathoth has four turns total for this next move. And then we skip over. In between the two turns, the two sets of turns, he will draw cards to replenish his deck before the next set two turns. Okay, so he has quite some freedom here. Choose a player to disregard their hand to graveyard and redraw the equal amount disregarded. So deep one is debatable. I'll save that for later. I have a couple of options here. Let's use, so this will multiply, the Grimoire as usual will increase that to four and it will convert Cultus. This whole pack here gets converted, converted to an Azathoth seal, which means Azathoth has won the game. There you go. He's victorious uh, via three rituals and one Elder Sign. Cthulhu just cannot keep up, just bad hands. But that's essentially going to be the game. And if you guys learned um, a bit about it, that's good too. wasn't really my intention, but I was hoping to just share how this game works. Uh, as always, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not promoting the product. I just bought it. I love playing this game occasionally. And I think their website, Cthulhu Age of Madness, where we can Google search it, there is a tabletop simulator um file for it a game for that so that's also no, another way it's free obviously you got by a tabletop simulator but yeah that's one way to play it if you can't find a hard copy of this uh but yeah that's the game i hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you next time